Today, I'm gonna to check into a hotel where I can bring my Ferrari to the room. That is gonna make sense later on. Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel. You join me on a beautiful afternoon here in Germany on a tour around Europe with my new Ferrari Pura Sangue. It is fully run in. This is an amazing adventure. Even if it's not going entirely to plan, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. But we kick off this afternoon from here at Motorworld in Berblingen, Stuttgart to head to the Motorworld in Munich. There are gonna be some amazing cars to take a sneak peek of here and at the other end with the de-restricted German Autobahn between and a V12 soundtrack I think we all want to hear. Over the years, I have stopped here at the Motorworld many times. Stuttgart, of course, the home of Mercedes, Porsche, AMG, tons of stuff around. But I actually came here for the first time and did a meetup with my McLaren 12C just around the corner there about 10 years ago in April 2014. Well, since then, many of the Schmiermobiles have been here. In fact, four years ago, Four years ago, time flies, I came here with the G63, with the trailer behind it, on the way to Schalkelisse to collect my SLS AMG Black Series. That was back in February 2020, before the entire world shut down. And then later that year, my Senna was here, had a service at McLaren Stuttgart, and actually spent a bit of time in the hotel lobby at the V8 Hotel right here. But we've been here with many of the others, the 650, AMG GTR, Lusso, STO, 675 LT, you name it. And today, I wanna to take you inside for a quick look because there are some things here that will take you by surprise. And then on the way, I wanna talk more about the Pura Sangue, which is pretty much the ultimate in grand touring Ferraris for an adventure like this, even if most of the plans up to this point haven't gone as I intended them to. In fact, in a way I have never previously seen. I'm gonna tell you more about that later on and exactly what's happened and why everything went very pear-shaped a little bit later too. It is always a treat to come and visit here. As you shall see in just a moment, I'll pick out some of the highlights. Like for example, a 991.2 Speedster heritage livery. I can definitely hear something moving around in the background. Let's head through. The cars here from the Maserati showroom that are all moving around, like the Levantes and the MC20s. As well as race cars, classic cars, check this out. The Jeff Koons limited edition Grand Coupe. That was done by the artist, painted, and only a limited number of those around the world. We've got a GT3 RS, E46 CSL, absolutely love it. Keep coming through up top spot there, Porsche Carrera GT, and underneath it, Ferrari Enzo, undercover, admittedly, but Enzo and Carrera GT, early 2000s hypercar battle or what? 430 scooter rear, that's a GT3 RS 4 litre 997. We have a GT Black Series, or do we have a pair of GT Black Series? Yep, we've got a pair of AMG GT Black Series above C63 Black Series. And how nice is it to see this again here at Lamborghini Stuttgart, one of the 112 Lamborghini Countaches, the new Countach, and the very car that I drove with on the Supercar Owners Circle Rally in Croatia at the end of last summer. In fact, I had just taken delivery of the Zembo TSRS. The owner had just taken delivery of this, and we spent a fair bit of time driving together, and it looks amazing. <laughs> SVJ starting up, cars moving around. This is also an original Gallardo Superleggera, obviously pre the LP560. I think a lot of people love those, I certainly do. There are lots of SVJs around, some classic 911s, and yes, the Lamborghini service, and hey, another Superleggera right in there as it happens. On the topic of what you might find, bright green Maserati Gran Cabrio, and then Mercedes Maybach Landerley, the G650. Only a hundred of these. Ridiculous thing. Each and every time you see one, absolutely silly. It is time to hit the road. Let's get this started. There we go. That was a fairly soft, warm start. Obviously it varies depending which driving mode you're in, but given it's dry, we can be in sport. We can be in manual. Actually, we'll start in auto. Let's go out. Let's get our journey underway. It's about two hours from here, but plenty of that is on the restricted autobahn and it means driving around the car park here firstly which is loaded with Maseratis and Bentleys and cars here from the dealer. Case in point Bentley Skittles that black and yellow with yellow wheels I've seen that car before that is a striking spec that Technica in green looks really nice color inspiration here load of Lambos that's Verde Scandal the color of Strad's new Storato which looks great in this kind of winter sun. That blue Urus looks really nice as well. Right, I need to stop doing this car shopping thing because we have the journey ahead of us from here 
to Munich. I'm very quickly driving through the Ferrari dealership where outside, 812 Competizioni, just there, casual as you do, and then inside the showroom, have a look at that SF90. What a colour scheme. Tiffany blue, yellow stripe SF90 next to the Nart Daytona. Anyway, I want to say thank you to the guys here as well because we just did a quick run of the code that was popping up and figuring out what parts are going to be required when we get home. But for the time being, not an issue. So let's go make some progress. One thing I quite like in this car is on the Manatino, I can press it. And I've got various different suspension settings because of these clever Multimatic dampers. So I can have it in soft while it's in sport. Now, I also want to point out, by the way, it is 12 degrees Celsius right now. And if you look in front of us, it's pretty sunny. And that is going to be relevant to one thing I'm going to tell you a little bit later on which will make, again, a bit more sense, but doesn't make sense, but does make sense. You'll, you'll get this. We are about to have my favorite sign in front of us on the gantry here is the end of the de-restricted, or sorry, the start of the de-restricted, the end of the de-restricted part of the Autobahn. So we can drop the gears. <laughs> I gotta say, this is a little bit ridiculous the sound out of this and the downshift that's the best bit now one little 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 niggle if i can and we've got to be you know both positives and negatives when you have your navigation open so your android auto or your apple carplay on the dashboard you don't have a rev counter yes you have the flashing led shift lights on the steering wheel which was an option and of course you've got the speed and the gear selector at the left but there's no rev counter and if i go here just to show you quickly on my side that's what you want, right? You want a nice big rev counter. It's something fun, so I, I kind of miss that. The passenger, however, is spoiled. The passenger has a lovely one. Right, hopefully further down this route, it's gonna open up a little bit, but I should stress, we are on winter tires, and these winter tires have a tire rating of 270 kilometers per hour, which is 168 miles an hour. Nice private jet flying in. That's very cool. So you see, I think it's cool traveling in a Pura Sangue, but that guy's winning. That, that's, that's the really cool way to do it. I mean, listen to that. This car is absolutely ridiculous. So that is VMAX, <laughs> at least VMAX for now. You can go probably 30 kilometers an hour faster, 40 kilometers an hour faster in this thing. Fun experience and crazy to think completely and totally legally to do that here on the de-restricted autobahn. Of course, we're safe to do so. I can't stress that enough. You can't just do it in the middle of the busy traffic, but like this right now, enough for a short spurt. What a ridiculous machine. I think it's a touch slower than the Lusso though. Or maybe I've become jaded by driving the SF90 so much, which is silly fast. I think this is a touch, touch slower than the Lusso, which would make sense because it is at least three or 400 kilos heavier, being a bigger car, more comfort back seats, the uh, remote electronic rear doors, all of those features. But hey, who am I to complain about doing a road trip with that soundtrack as we head towards the Amaron Hotel, the Motor World in Munich, where they have these car studios, which I've never stayed at before. And I'm quite looking forward to finding out how this works. Obviously a downside of being on the Autobahn and having fun with a V12 is that you have to do a lot of this. Um, and when I say a lot of this, I mean a lot of this. The other interesting thing, which I think I've mentioned on a video before, but probably haven't for a while, is that when here you have Ultimate 102, or if you go to Shell and you have 100, look at this, look at the sign, 98. It's actually 98, it's not 102. It's marketing. Oh well, could be worse. This is gonna be what? It would have been much, much more effective to not fill up on the highway at two euros 40. <laughs> this is a 100 litre tank. I could spend 240 euros right now, which is what? 200 pounds, maybe 260, 270 dollars for a single tank? 
and that's not even the most expensive we've had this trip. So that's the downside of the Pura Sangue. The upshot is it's really fun and B12s probably won't exist forever, so you want to make the most of it while you still can, and it's amazing and practical and comfortable and makes for a brilliant car for this purpose, and you could have four people in here, and we've got a ton of luggage for a couple of weeks on the road. Overall, it's a really comfortable car, really, really comfortable. Just this, this is, this is not so good unfortunately. It's not too bad. We've clicked off at 185-ish euros. I mean, it's not great, but it's not too bad. It's a small price to pay to get to travel across Europe in a V12 Pura Sangue. As a football fan, it is always quite fun to come past the Allianz Arena. I know it's hiding behind the trees right here, but the home of Bayern München, Bayern Munich, which is, of course, not only a very cool looking stadium, but also the most successful winning team in every possible way in Germany right now, led by Harry Kane, England's number one striker, of course. Anyway, this place is often lit up in all sorts of bright colours, red, blue, depending on what's going on. I just find it fun that you go past it on the highway. We're not far now. It's only five minutes or so to Motor World. We have made it, the Motor World, from one Motor World to another Motor World. Now, at this point, I would like to say thank you to my friend Alex from the Satin Crew, who has helped arrange a whole load of things here with Door Group, and with the room. The Dua Group have lots of the dealers here and they've actually serviced my McLaren. The Senna was serviced at the Stuttgart Motor World, but here they have Bugatti, they have McLaren, they have a bunch of different things and they are very kindly going to give this car a rinse down. So we're going to head inside before we figure what's going to happen next and basically take it step by step and go and check in and work all this out. Step one for the evening then, make this look nice and pretty because after the amount of miles we've driven with it, and I'm sorry it's quite dark obviously here at the moment, but you can kind of see from the back of the car, it is absolutely caked in a layer of salt and grime, especially up here, look. It's always interesting to see what the aero does with these kinds of things. You've got not too much dirt up on the rear window, but the whole of the back, number plate and exhaust, absolutely and totally filthy. And before we bring it inside, we definitely want to make this look a little bit nicer so a big thanks to the guys here for making some progress with that we've just come inside checked in at the hotel reception but we need to talk cars because well firstly the lineup of hypercars here with the door group over this side where you have the mclaren showroom the workshop where the pura sangue is at the moment and there is another problem <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment our room the car studio is down at the very far end it's super cool, but we're going to bring the car in shortly. Before that, we need to walk around a little bit here. I actually came out here for the introduction of the Zenvo Aurora. The customer preview event was actually held right here at the Motor World. Firstly, though, behind me, Valkyrie, Countach, V600, V12 Speedster, Perspore, Chiron. Let's go take a look at some of the hypercars here. I was not really expecting this lineup. Um, yeah, I said earlier that we'd see some special cars. Aston Martin Valkyrie, one of 150 of the original Valkyries. The owner of this car has actually driven it a fair bit already, which is super cool. The V600 Roadster, one of only seven. They made the V600 of the V12 Vantage GT12, effectively, with a softer setup and a seven-speed dogleg manual gearbox. They made seven coupes and seven Roadsters. V12 Speedster, one of 88 of the newer Vantage with the V12, with the open Barquetta style, and then one of 112, or well, we've seen two today, two of 112 of the new Lamborghini Countach. This car in the black with the bronze wheels against that. And behind, if we walk around, there are actually plenty of other things to take a look at. I mean, there's an Elva just over there. We'll go to McLaren in a moment, and we'll talk about these in just a moment. But in the Bugatti showroom is the Chiron Perspo, one of 60, and the Chiron Sport alongside it, which was the slightly updated version they made of the Chiron. On this side, that is an AMG GT track series. I think it's the first customer track series I've seen. They made 55, uh, 55 years of AMG at the time of introduction. And that's quite topical, given the other day I filmed the new three litre CSL. This is the three litre CS competition car, I believe, but with the livery, which is really awesome. Really, really awesome. There's a ton of other stuff around, so it's a question of where do we go next? Surrounded at the moment by some Morgans, a Lotus 311 come past. There's a 992 GT3 RS. Oh, Red and Mirror inside there, 812 GTS, 992 GT3, M4. One of my favorites in the world, the Carrera GT. This car actually has, I think, something nearly 100,000 kilometers showing on the odometer. And there's a Magenta 930 Carrera 3 liter, pink, 
suits it, that works. With the glass boxes, you kind of have to step back to be able to see everything sometimes. Another GT3 RS next to an earlier sibling, the ST, obviously very topical now. Lovely Alpha 8C up there, 8C Competizione next to the Hurricane. This is a quite spectacular wall of the glass box garage. Best part of 100 odd cars. Again, hard to see everything. I mean, you can spot the obvious stuff like the STO and the Viper. There's a 60s Fastback just up there. New Ford GT, Corvette of the generation I drove out in Vegas, actually. There's another Ford GT there. You see the gap through the floating buttress, which is quite recognizable. Maserati are here as well. So a bunch of Maseratis. Mercedes SLR McLaren just up above. In fact, a few classic Mercs are stored away here. MC20, I guess, lurking underneath the cover just there. If we keep coming past, yeah, this is all Merc land over here. 05 Ford GT, we've got F8 Tributo, lovely old 60s Ferrari just there. In fact, a couple of Ferraris, Z8, 992 Sport Classic. Not even sure what that is, but tons and tons of things lurking in the boxes. Then we walk past McLaren and you've got a healthy choice here, a very healthy choice. Behind that pillar is a Senna in the showroom and there's actually a Senna GTR over there at the backside. But yeah, all 675, lots of 720s. The original 12C still looks amazing, doesn't it? Still looks like a fantastic car. Got to point out these two, matching pair of SLS AMG Roadster and AMG GT Roadster, both in red with red roofs. Another 675, Spider. Keep coming down. We've got a couple of other McLarens hiding, lurking away. Nice spec, green over the gold wheels. A few Ferraris and things dotted in here. In fact, I'm missing the obvious. That's another Senna GTR looking undercover right there. Um, that's a Singer. I want to say that's a Singer DLS. No, that's a DLS. Also two Singers here. My car being worked on, which we need to get to in a second. Uh, then we've got a couple of Lambos and uh, Astons and just lots of cool things around. In much of the way of the last few days, cleaning this car has not gone as I hoped. Unfortunately, Max cleaning it discovered that at some point I had somehow driven through some paint and it was splattered over the side and the back. Clearly the front or the right hand side had gone through it. It had splattered up, gone down the side of the car, under the diffuser and was up the back as well. Um, not ideal. Fast forward a few hours and trying various different techniques, steaming, hot water and machine polishing and a lot of labor and we are a lot cleaner. There's more that needs to be done because this thing has some particularly awkward shapes around it, like in here, but the main body is at least now as it should. But as you can probably tell, it's quite late in the evening. <laughs> it's been another one of those. You cannot write this trip and I will explain more about that once we have now started this, driven it out of here, which is quite strange in the middle of the night, and taken it to the car studio. So let's drive it round. Well, here we are. Shut the curtains behind the car in the car studio um, that literally slides behind. Now this is at the big end of cars, but still plenty of room and check this out. There's a little seating area, some nice little treats as well over in this whole setup. Have a little chill out next to your car in the garage or come through here because this is where it's really quite unusual. You literally have the bedroom looking out towards where the car is. <laughs> How cool is that? Put a sangue right there. Up here is where you've got some bathroom, other type stuff. But yeah, we're in the hotel room with the Ferrari. Not many places in the world where you can do that. Ultimate man cave type setup. And not too expensive either. It's about 300 euros, 250 or so pounds for the night to have that space. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. That's actually really cool. And there's a whole lot of different lighting thing. Right, we need to go learn a little bit more about the room. And um, I just want to recap a bunch of stuff and explain the like chaos that's got us to this point. 
At this point, suitcases are still in the boot, but we can deal with that in a moment. And there is a lot of stuff in the car that needs tidying up and sorting out because everything's gone very much in a different direction to what I expected. The Pur Sangue is a fabulous car for this kind of adventure. And sitting with it here right now is really quite strange. But, 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 I want to tell you about all of the things that went off kilt up to this point on this tour, because I've been doing big, crazy road trips and adventures and sharing these videos with you guys for many years. I've done over 5,000 different videos, test driven so many different cars for pretty much every day of the last 14 years. So I've got a pretty good idea about planning adventures. And if you think about it, when we're on an adventure like this, I've booked it in the months ahead. So when we were in the United States on the Dark Horse tour, I was booking the Puro tour. And while we've been on this tour, I'm booking what's coming next. Always planning ideas, not necessarily like day by day because stuff changes. Things evolve in terms of car releases, the weather, stuff, new ideas, new things come about. But always with an eye in the background on logistics, on travel plans, I've always really enjoyed planning out road trips since I was a teenager. Even before I could drive, I was already planning road trips in the early stages of Google Maps. I just loved it, had a lot of fun with it. But the last seven to 10 days, has been bizarre. I've never experienced anything like this. And I wanted to tell you, because I think it would be interesting, a little bit more about the logistics and what's actually happening behind the scenes when we do a tour like this, because all you see is the polished end result. All you see is the like smooth, easy videos where everything falls into place. And the reality is this hasn't been like that at all. We started earlier today in Stuttgart. And the reason we were even in Stuttgart and the reason this tour has even happened in the first place to come to Germany and to piece a few things together was for a friend of mine to collect his new 911 Dakar, which was going to be awesome. A couple of weeks ago, after we had built everything up, the whole drive down, planned about five or six days in Germany, filming different things, that got cancelled, which was, or not cancelled, I should say delayed, got pushed back a month, two months, we don't know exactly, due to some very exciting options. And we are gonna be seeing more of that car. So that's gonna happen, just not right now. But obviously off the back of that, knowing we were coming to Zuppenhausen, to the home of Porsche, I planned that we would do a bunch of stuff here with Porsche, with AMG, and with some other companies in the area, kind of built up this whole tour. And it was like, okay, no big deal, that's been canceled. And we planned in some replacement things that would all kind of happen and it would work out and it would, would come together and whatever. And one of those to go through this and to go through this in the order that things dropped, right? So that was going to be the Saturday. On the Thursday, we had arranged something in Frankfurt, which is on the way, logical route. Um, that was the next thing to be dropped about a week ago. So about a week before the Thursday went. And remember we were driving over on the what was it gonna be? Tuesday for this, having on Monday been at MSRT because Sunday was the Zenvo, but that got pushed to Tuesday. So we pushed the departure to Tuesday night, but then it became Wednesday night. You see where this is going. Then early next week, where we're going on Tuesday, I was gonna be doing something with Maserati, a press trip, but it became really complicated with logistics and arrangements. And I wasn't gonna be able to shoot the content that I wanted to be able to shoot for you guys. So we kind of mutually agreed that wasn't gonna work. But in place of the Dakar, we also booked to do two videos with Porsche, with a 911 ST and with a Porsche Dakar as well, which was gonna be awesome. We also booked in Stuttgart to do something with an AMG GT, plus to do something with another AMG. And there's a reason I'm not saying which car at this stage. So Porsche said we couldn't do the 911 ST because of the weather. Last week here, it was snowing heavily. There's actually still snow outside, but today, and this is why I referenced the weather, it was sunny and we saw 13 degrees Celsius on the screen. 13 is fine. In the UK, that's like a nice April day sometimes. Like, you're lucky. So that got cancelled for that. The AMG GT also got cancelled because of weather for Mercedes. They, they weren't keen. Neither company was keen to book it in. So we've had five, five cancellations already for this like week-long period. Then I'm going to say that the Zembo delay came up because that was at the beginning of the week. And so kind of pushed the departure from Tuesday to Wednesday, which worked anyway because the thing on Thursday in Frankfurt was cancelled. So that wasn't a problem. Then the drive that we were supposed to do with the car at AMG got damaged, I think on Tuesday, 
I want to say, and that's what I found out about when we had just taken the Eurotunnel to France, and that's why we turned around and went back home, because it didn't make sense to come here for the thing that was cancelled on Friday. So we went back home, did something at home that I needed to do, which is going to be coming out in the future. It's working with a really exciting brand. So that's going to be coming down the line. Then, <laughs> after that got damaged and it got cancelled, the Dakar that was still booked at this point to film at the weekend, and we're talking like on Friday here, Friday afternoon, broke down. I believe something some reason it's the car's no longer available so we're now eight things down and the last thing that was booked was a visit to another company here on monday today which we would have come over from stuttgart for but the company to be honest openly said that they're really busy working with customer cars at the moment and didn't have the time could we push it till a later date so the entire schedule from tuesday to tuesday eight days was supposed to be nine different things all of which got changed, all of which got completely scrapped away. And that's why we then flew up to Hamburg because that was gonna replace the Dakar collection. Probably makes sense now, easy logistics or routing. And I've been, I'm not complaining because driving around Europe in a Ferrari is epic. It's like the stuff of dreams, but it is quite funny when we had this like massive agenda. And in the last seven days, it was just like everything dropping like flies, cancellations galore. And I'm quite used to it. You know, we've got lots of friends around Europe and Germany and different places. So tons to keep busy with, things to do, places to go. Something spontaneous like this I had in my mind for a while that I wanted to come here, but it was a little bit complicated to book. And that's why I said thank you earlier to the door group and also to Alex, the satin crew for making it all possible. But yeah, it's not been an easy one because every time something drops, there's a whole lot of recalculating what happens next and where we go. And that's not like, it didn't go from everything being planned to nothing being planned. It was like one thing, right, recalculate, one thing, right, recalculate, one thing, right, recalculate. Lots of rebooked Euro tunnels, lots and lots and lots and lots of rebooked hotels. I think one hotel I have booked and cancelled something like four times during this last week. I'm sorry to that hotel if they recognise my name. But hey, that is where we are. And none of that even gets to the things that have gone wrong on the tour so far itself. Namely, the Zenvo's missing key and then missing registration document that we couldn't find in Liège. Then after that, driving towards the Ferrari dealer in Cologne because of an error message that had popped up only to then on the way, get a nail in a tire and need a new one. And of course, all of that is even more curveballs to try and work with. So kind of 12 things changed or came up in the last week. I've never had it go like that. So much crazy stuff happening at once. However, what's ahead after we leave from this lovely little room, which is actually warming up quite nicely, thanks to a six and a half litre V12 that we have in here, is to take the Pura Sangue via the mountains, maybe finding some snow on our way to Italy to go to a certain town called Marinello, where this car was originally born and where some future Schmimobiles are going to be born as well, with some very exciting news to share with you really quite soon. Something that is, to be honest, beyond exciting. And we're gonna to get to that. So once again, thanks to everyone who was part of all of this. I'm quite looking forward to taking a rest. It's been a long old day, but it is very, very cool to be here right now with this. Literally chilling. What a place, what a venue. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you're enjoying this journey, the Puro Sangue road trip, the Puro tour. But that's it for now. Let's go have a rest. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.